So here are the steps, right? So here's what happened, right? I took my CT scan, right, on Tidra. I went ahead and uh, did my, uh, took an intro surface scan, sent it off to the laboratory. I get back from, back from the laboratory a box with my stuff, right? And I seat the guide in, in, her, in her mouth, right? And now I'm ready to start my procedure. So what is the first thing that I do? Well, I like to make a flap. This, the surgical kit is designed that if you want to do flapless surgery, there are trephines with pilot drills incorporated in it that are guided by the sleeves. Okay, that are guided by the sleeves. You see there are two dimensions because there are two sizes of sleeves. I like to make an incision in probably 99% of the cases because it's not about seeing the bone, it's about managing the soft tissue. So I want to have maximum volume of keratinized tissue. I don't want to cut it away. To make the incision and then to suture it afterwards is an extra couple of minutes. I'd rather do that than lose all of that tissue. Also, in most of these cases where you have an edentulous area, you're going to have some resorption of the buccal plate. So even though there's adequate bone, uh, take a look at team like Tidra, right? You're going to have some falling into that soft tissue. And so I can augment the soft tissue just by making an incision, right? Because then I can push the, the soft tissue to the buckle. Now, I put in what's called the short pilot drill. You see, that sleeve, if you look at it, you'll see that uh, the drill sticks out, right? So when this drill enters that sleeve, there's no guidance, right? Yeah, I kind of know where it is because I'm going to put it about the center of that sleeve. I don't have guidance until the DGS itself engages the sleeve. So I have to have a drill short enough that that sleeve is going to go into the DGS, into the drill guide sleeve before the drill touches bone. So I first put in the short pilot drill and it will create a hole two, three millimeters into bone. So that's a starting point. Right, so there's my, uh, my drill inside the DGS, right? That point on the DGS, right, has to go ahead and enter that sleeve before that tip of the drill touches the bone. Once I've done that, okay, I can come back with my subsequent dr drills and they're gonna fall into that initial hole and they get guidance from the sleeve. Now, there's a report that comes with this and the report's gonna give you all kinds of information because there are different lengths of drills. So number one, what's the report going to tell you? Which implant you picked, right? So here, 4.2 by um, 10 millimeters. It's telling me which, what the platform is. It's a standard platform, because I'm going to need that information for some of the tooling. OK, it's telling me which DGS. There's a wide and a narrow, two sizes. Why? Um, because I need to have a DGS that's narrow enough to put in close proximity to a tooth, an adjacent tooth or in a small space, or multiple implants in proximity to each other, right? And then I need a wide sleed for the wider implants because they're not going to fit through, or the drills are not going to fit through that narrow DGS. It's going to tell me the drill length because the drill length has nothing to do with the implant length. It has to do with the length that I'm going to drill from the top of the drill guide to the base of the osteotomy. Okay, you'll notice everything is in colors. Why? You know, the implant is colored red because that's the color of the vial on the, you know, PAL top 4.2 millimeter implant. This is bronze or brown. Why? In where it says 20 millimeters because that's the color of those drills because we have multiple lines of, of drills. So I've used the short two millimeter drill. I'm, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put in the next size drill, right? The two millimeter long drill and drill to final depth. And then I keep on increasing the drill diameter till I get to the diameter of osteotomy that I want. Okay, so that goes in. You see it gets seated until the DGS bottoms out. There's no lines that I have to look at. I bottom it out all the time. Okay, now if you look at, uh, at this, you'll see that these drills are all have a purple band. Because there are three lines of drills. One, two, three. One of them are, one line are 20 millimeters in length. One is 25 millimeters and the other is 30. If the report is telling me that I should use the line of 20 millimeter length drills, right, they're going to all have a brown or bronze, you know, color on it. If it tells me to use the 25 millimeter drill, they're all purple in length, all color on the shank. And if it's 30, then it's going to be all, uh, all silver. And that's how it lays out inside the kit. For those of you that like the Versa system, a system, uh, a new very innovative drill system that does a process called osteoidentification, where it expands bone, it's used for closed sinus lifts, right? Their drill lengths are 25 millimeters. And because of our system and the way that the digital sleeve works, right, you can take that Versa Burr and utilize it, you know, if you want to use that for bone expansion in the PALTOP guided, uh, guided uh, system.
And so uh, this is a uh, kind of a useful tool. I'll just ask the laboratory, pick the 25 millimeter length drill, and then I know it's going to coordinate with the, Versa, with the Versa drills. We finish the osteotomy, right? We countersink if necessary. Most of the time with Paltop, you're not going to go ahead and countersink, right? Uh, only when the bone is very dense. The countersink is also guided by the sleeve. And the reason I say that we don't use it most of the time, because that coronal portion of the implant of where the microthreads are give a lot of stability to the implant. And so if, unless the bone is very dense, I want that additional, uh, additional stability. So, you know, you carefully choose whether you want to use the, the countersink uh, or not. And then the implant itself can be placed directly through the guide. Now, when the implant is placed through the guide, there's a tool, there's a key, and you'll see that there are numbers on the key. These numbers here have nothing to do with the length of the implant. It has to do with how far is it from the top of the guide to where you want the head of the implant to be. So that number is also on the report. It says use, you know, uh, you know place it to 11 millimeters, place it to, um, you know, uh, 13 millimeters. So here, if we look it up, we'll see here, okay, we had our implant length, right? We had the drill length. We had the key length. There were three sizes, right? And then it'll also tell you the key offset. What does that mean? It means I want to go ahead and put the implant till I get to the 10 millimeter mark. And that's where the implant will be seated to the exact position as planned by the laboratory for the guide and the provisional restoration or the custom, or the custom component. Okay, so you deliver to that point. I, in fact, don't like to deliver it by handpiece to that point. I deliver it so it's just shy of that. Maybe, maybe the last, you know, half, you know, to one millimeter I do by hand because I like to feel the bone. And when you deliver the implant through the system, even though it's designed that way, you lose some of that, uh, you lose some of that feel. Okay, we also can coordinate and orient our, our orientation of our hex if we need to go ahead and position that for placement of the implants. Concave healing abutments are placed if it's going to be a one-stage procedure in line with the aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic concepts. And here I'm just showing you the two sizes of sleeves, right? And again, the report will tell you which one to go ahead and use, but each one will only fit the sleeve that's that size inside the, inside the guide. So you really can't make a mistake, you know, uh, with that. This is, what the, uh, this is what the kit looks like. Okay, it all comes, everything you need is inside there, right? There's also a bone trephine, so if you're placing the implant and it's subcrestal, that bone can interfere with seating the components. This is a self-limbing system. You screw in that what looks like a healing abutment, and it guides the drill so it doesn't damage the implant and clears away any additional, uh, any additional bone.